My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn, and I am anointed with fresh oil. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. Ah, believe me, I'm just seeing a river flowing. This service tonight is bringing people into dimensions. Cubits have been measured in the spirit and people have been pushed into deeper levels of the anointing. Let's just take a minute or two and allow the glory to just rest upon your life. Sometimes all you need to do is to just be silent in his presence and let that Shekinah rest upon you. When his glory comes, it comes to change. It comes to lift. Mm. Just stay in that glory. Let it change you. Let it build you. Sabrande gede bele katosa prahas kadi bele na kusha priyata katos. Kalata prande ge baruziata. It is not those who rush on God. It is those who wait. We must learn to wait. Sometimes we are in a hurry, a hurry for everything, a hurry for miracles, a hurry for transformation. It is they that wait upon the Lord. There is power in waiting. There is power in waiting. It takes faith to wait. Let him do the work he's doing. Go ahead. For some of you, there is a circumcision happening within your spirit. A cutting away of every limitation and every hindrance. There is that, that circumcision. Allow his majesty move upon your life and move upon your destiny one more minute these are the mysteries of his presence these are the mysteries of encounters one is the law of waiting you must wait if you want to behold his power and his glory, you must learn to wait. There is healing when we wait. There is restoration when we wait. There is speed when we wait. There is revelation when we wait. There is empowerment when we wait. There is renewal when we wait. Thank you Jesus for your marvelous presence in the midst of your people we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words in part they are ancient words ever true Changing me and changing you We have come with open up Oh let the ancient words be 
I have come with open hearts Oh, let the ancient words Lord, we declare in the name of Jesus that tonight will indeed be one night that we will not forget in a hurry. We thank you for what you are already doing in our lives. This is what we get for trusting you enough to come before you with hearts broken hearts humbled hearts expectant we pray in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god that no one here and no one following no one connecting by faith will leave disappointed tonight and we vow that whilst you transform whilst you heal whilst you deliver we decree and declare that through our transformations through our healings through our deliverances through the diverse manifestations of your presence jesus and him alone will be enthroned revealed and glorified even in our midst for in jesus name we pray god bless you please be seated Please be seated. God bless you. It's good to have everyone around. Um, this does not always happen, but let me teach you something. Never frown at moments like this, where God just decides to move in the midst of his people and where you have the opportunity to soak in the glory. It, it will not happen for every service. But if and when it happens, do not fight it. There is something God is doing. It's good to be excellent. It's good to display a high level of leadership. But you must have the flexibility that when he comes, and in whatever manner he comes, you must be able to receive him. When we become excessively rigid over the activity of the Holy Spirit, many times we lose out you see the way the holy spirit works just play strings for me thank you the way the holy spirit works is that when he comes into a place just help those under the anointing it is the honor that you give him through your patience through your discernment through the manifestation of faith that makes for the continuation of what he is doing just because he has come does not mean he will bless you where your resistance stops him is where he will honorably stop is why many people never dive into the deeper dimensions of the things of the spirit because sometimes we are too calculated. bible and even in modern history there were times they would just come and soak in that glory and not even know the name of what they are doing but when he's done you will find out that the infirmities are no longer there you will find out that the limitations are no longer there can i tell you this when you spend one hour of quality time in his presence it can give you 10 years of another man's desire his presence has value always are we together so don't you think this is just some pentecostal thing or charismatic thing not at all this is the spirit of God responding to the hunger, responding to the desire, responding to the passion of God's people. In every assembly, in every ministry, in every gathering like this, there will always be people who are not serious with God. There will always be people who do not think God is a big deal. But I can assure you there are always people who come before about the things of the spirit it is for such people for their sake god will not leave himself without a witness are we together it is impossible to take god seriously and these kinds of moments will not happen in your church in your life in your family on what you understand 
your pace will be too slow there are many times god will walk with you is three years later that you will understand what he did three years before it's an act of faith to trust him and go all the way and let your mind catch up sometimes we become too scientific and philosophical in our walk with god we want to understand the details of what god is doing except that sometimes his ways are past finding out you can stretch your intelligence and yet not understand what god is doing hallelujah praise the name of the lord i welcome everyone in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god and um i particularly want to appreciate and honor all those who have traveled from outside of this nation um, i do this not for the ritual but just because sometimes um, my my heart really goes out to the many people who travel from all across the globe not for a special convention for the services every week and um, it takes a lot to travel from across africa from across the globe people come churches send their delegates their pastors we have people come from everywhere it is impossible for you to just decide that you will get up and leave your nation and come to another place when you can pick up your phone and follow you see that it means that there is something there for you that God is sending you to receive is that true and so I sincerely want to appreciate them I may not have the time a miracle service is next week and usually would take that time to honor them but just just to aside from um, dear men of God that I would, I would appreciate shortly I want to appreciate if you are here uh, whether here or in the overflow and you came from outside Nigeria please stand just for us to honor you please stand wherever you are let's celebrate them let's celebrate them inside all of the overflows outside god bless you and those who are connecting from outside of this place we love you we sincerely appreciate you in the name of jesus christ where are the delegates from canada are they here the pastor who came with delegates from canada please find out let me know let me be sure that um okay they are yet to arrive okay that's fine praise god i know a pastor and i mean some delegates a number of them all the way from canada you know ju they just indicated that they were in their way coming just to come and fellowship and to contact this grace you see when when god begins to honor and help you like this two things very quickly one beware of pride there is absolutely nothing in us outside of the mercy and the help of god and then number two you must be able to take the love and the commitment of god's people as a trust that you must not betray you must make sure they do not spend so much resources time energy and then come to your assembly and then you waste their time and share the grace it is very unfair in fact it is evil it is my covenant with god that no one no one would ever come for any service regardless what service and then go back the same now so thank you so much for making the time to come may the lord bless you i pray that your coming will be most profitable for you you have our blessings and you have our prayers in jesus name amen and amen let me honor and celebrate please be seated thank you let me honor and celebrate two great um men of god in our midst one is a dear friend and brother reverend dr paul Mbwagbo, all the way from cameroon thank you thank you so much i love you sir it was his church and uh, that hosted me in cameroon last year it was such a phenomenal time thank you thank you so much and then we have another great wonderful man of god all the way from Cote d'Ivoire, reverend ralph wafo thank you thank you so much the lord bless you sir in the name of jesus christ and for every minister of the gospel here doesn't matter whether you're in the main auditorium or outside the lord bless you we honor you in jesus name amen and amen father give me an encounter tonight in the name of jesus please lift your voice and pray 
give me an encounter even by your spirit give me an encounter by your spirit that will change my life forever in Jesus name I pray hallelujah commanding the supernatural part two we are wrapping up a series that we started last week on the supernatural helping believers to understand the necessity for walking in the supernatural and the demands what it takes to command the supernatural part one we looked at the dynamics of faith as the first key to releasing the supernatural and then for tonight part two we're going to be looking at engaging the anointing please pay attention let your spirit be open i'll be teaching us on the dynamics of the anointing so we agreed last week that when it has to do with commanding the supernatural it is an interplay between faith and the anointing that there is a role that faith has to play as far as commanding the supernatural is concerned and there is a role that the anointing has to play um, for a very long time in the body of Christ it seems as though there's been a great divide and even confusion as to how these spiritual forces operate in producing miracles and the manifestation of the supernatural on one hand we have people who are in quote faith people and there is nothing else they are interested in all they know is just faith the moment faith is in place everything is in place then we have especially the charismatics who believe that it is about the anointing it has nothing to do with faith once the power of God is not present doesn't matter what you are speaking doesn't matter what you are saying and for a long time there has been arguments and even misunderstandings across this divide I think I've said it here and I will repeat it again that the dynamics of faith and even engaging the anointing all of these forces were supposed to work together to produce the supernatural there is nowhere in the Bible where you are given the liberty to choose whether you want faith or you want the anointing it's like choosing whether you want fuel or you want tires in your car which one do you think is important as far as movement is concerned if you have healthy tires that are alive and you do not have fuel the car will not move but then if you have fuel full tank your gas is your your your, your tank is full and your car does not have tires it will not move also so you can see that they are very very important and my assignment tonight as we wrap up this series is to open up our eyes to understand the how to engage the anointing many believers continue to live defeated lives because they do not understand how faith works we looked at that please do well to get the teachings and then now we are looking at the dynamics or engaging the anointing last week we laid a very important foundation that I want us to not forget how that in this kingdom every time we talk about the supernatural and we talk about results you must understand the motivation behind our desire for results please look up it is very important that we put this in place and in perspective when dealing with subjects of the supernatural why do we need results in our lives why do we need to see the manifest power of God in our lives I told us that results are also evangelists that there is a kind of evangelism only results can do is that true there is a sermon that our territory is waiting for and the preacher is not a human vessel the preacher is the testimony the results the workings of the power of God that we are not the only ones who are preaching that our results can also preach is that true 
and when we do not produce results we stop our territories from hearing the message that can save them results are very important john 15 and verse 8 jesus himself was teaching and he said hearing is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples when you read verse 16 of the same scripture 16 he said you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain it is important for believers to command results it is important that our, our christian adventures produce fruits and results that compel all and sundry to know that number one jesus is alive and number two that he is dependable i would always say this especially during the miracle services that um every time you receive a miracle you receive a testimony from god you must understand that every testimony comes with a letter from god to you three things captured in that letter number one the message of love in every manifestation of the supernatural jesus through it is saying i love you i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness number two in every miracle and every manifestation of the supernatural please pay attention jesus is saying through it that i am dependable god is dependable that means you can know you are safe trusting him and then number three when miracles and supernatural occurrences happen written in that letter is i am almighty you have to discern the supernatural every time you receive a testimony every time things begin to work for you don't just enjoy the miracles don't just enjoy the manifestations you must discern what god through those things is saying to you number one the message of love number two a charge that god can be trusted and then number three that he is almighty reminding you again that he is not just mighty he is almighty we looked at the dynamics of faith exploring how faith works i told us that the according to scripture the equation is that it comes by grace and then it is true faith and we got to examine faith that bible faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word we did say that bible faith is predicated upon two foundations number one the integrity of god that God is dependable. Number two, the ability of God. Please do not forget this. If it is Bible faith you want to manifest, it is predicated upon two factors. One, the integrity of God. That God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together? And then that number two, God has all power. Once have I spoken, twice have you heard that all power belongs to God not God and Satan not God and men it is exclusively that of God that every time men seem to walk in dominion that their dominion in this kingdom is shared dominion not absolute dominion we were made partakers it's not a life that we have on our own are we together and then we discussed a few things that would help us walk in faith so now we'll discuss the anointing i have by the privilege of god's grace i've had the honor of studying and teaching the subject of the power of god and the anointing for many years and you would think that after teaching this for so many years i would have exhausted everything to be known about the anointing and that is not true one of the ways you know that something comes from god is that 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 uh, that inability to exhaust the riches in it that is in god will also follow his thoughts 
and whatever it is that is of God. You can never truly exhaust everything about the anointing, about faith. It is layer after layer. When you are done with one layer, God will honor you by unveiling another layer of that spiritual reality. We need the anointing, especially in the times that we live in. Psalm 92 and verse 10. Psalm 92 and verse 10. Let's begin our teaching now. Please pay attention. And then, like we are already experiencing, please be sensitive because every time you teach on the anointing, the Spirit of the living God has the assignment to bring confirmation to the things that are being taught. So it is not unusual. I know you know that by now. When there are manifestations of the Spirit while the Word is coming, you just focus on the Word and make sure that you have understanding. 92 verse 10 can we read together one to read but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn and i shall be anointed with fresh oil i shall be anointed with fresh oil the bible tells us to look up to jesus so theologically speaking jesus is our pattern man he represents perfect theology that means jesus was approved of god to be the reference every believer who wants to attain unto stature and growth in the spirit the bible mandates that you look primarily you look unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith you understudy his life and the way that he lived and you can glean wisdom and follow that spiritual pathway to a life of excellence and a life of glory the bible talks about jesus who although was the word he came as the word incarnate through the womb of a young virgin called mary and the bible lets us know that at age 12 jesus was about the temple learning he said shouldn't you know that i should be about my father's business are we together by the time he's 30 we see jesus coming to jordan to be baptized of john who was a prophet we call him the baptist john baptizes jesus and he comes out of the water and the bible says the heavens were opened and he saw the holy spirit descending on jesus in the similitude of a dove and a voice spoke from heaven and said this is my beloved son are we Bible students? In whom I am well pleased. He said, hear ye him. And then as we'll be reading later on, the Bible says the Spirit of God immediately drove him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. He was there fasting and praying 40 days and 40 nights and having, you know, triumph over the temptations of Satan. The Bible records that he returned in the power of the Spirit. And there began the ministry of signs and wonders, the ministry of the supernatural that would not end, culminated even in his resurrection and his exaltation at the right hand of the Father. So he became for us a template and a pattern man to study the dynamics of walking in the anointing. What is the anointing? We talk a lot about the anointing. Preachers want to be anointed. Business people want to be anointed career people want to be anointed there is such an obsession for the anointing and there's nothing wrong with that we need to be anointed it is my considered opinion that the anointing oil serves more for impartation than even cooking in africa i think so i may be wrong but i think so that chances are excellent that if you see someone buying an anointing oil it, it hardly will be for the kitchen that's to tell you how much we believe in the anointing it's not mockery are you getting what i'm saying now i'm just showing you how determined we are to make sure the anointing is within our reach but it seems as though regardless all the oil that we have in our bottles and the ones we have through different mediums and right now sadly in africa we've invented a lot of things largely extra biblical um, strategies to bring the anointing but it is it's a sincere desire from for, for for God's people from God's people to bring the anointing within their reach somehow we have read through scripture 
and we have seen through the lives of a few people who seem to have been marvelously anointed by God we have seen the possibilities that have come from their lives be it in ministry be it in business when you see a man of God who is doing something very extraordinary and very supernatural you most likely will say that man is heavily anointed you may not say that man is full of faith subconsciously we have connected the anointing to supernatural extraordinary manifestations is that true yeah manifestations like healings deliverances you know impartations of the spirit supernatural prosperity influence anything that moves above and beyond the scope of science and may not seem to, to go through the normal law of process or the course of nature usually it attracts us and we credit that manifestation to the presence of the anointing what then is the anointing the anointing um, the, the, the whole essence, please look up. I've taught it here and let me just repeat it for the sake of this series. The idea of being anointed from ancient times, the context is to be smeared with oil, but, but the, the idea of being anointed is to legitimize an operation. So when we say an individual is anointed, what we mean is that you have been authorized. To be anointed means to be authorized to do whatever you are doing. To be anointed means to be empowered to do whatever it is you are doing. Are we together? To anoint means to legitimize an operation so that both the earth and the realm of the spirit no longer considers you to do it illegally. So when the Bible talks about being anointed, it is an ordination that really is the essence of ordination to legitimize an operation are we together now so um, in its purest form the anointing has nothing to do with oil you see most times and, and now sadly when believers don't have the requisite spiritual knowledge and we get them into all these rituals of oil and the rest it turns into it almost becomes witchcraft sometimes all of those mediums only find their credence if and when the believer has an understanding of what he is doing. To be anointed has nothing to do with oil necessarily. To be anointed has nothing to do with a handkerchief, a mantle, some medium. I'm not saying those things are wrong. But the essence of being anointed is to empower you to do or to become and then to legitimize your operation. Are we together? What is the anointing? The anointing is God's ability. Please write it down. You have to know the owner of that ability. It matters to know that the ability belongs to God. The anointing is not just ability. The anointing is God's ability. Because there are many other kinds of abilities routed through. There are, there are abilities that seem to come from demons and come from wherever. But God's ability at work in a human or material vessel. Please write it down. The anointing is God's ability at work in a human or material vessel. to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary results i'll take it again the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary results so the ability belongs to god even whilst we take advantage of that ability god's ability at work in a human vessel or any material vessel and then the intent the goal of that anointing is to empower and to help that individual to accomplish god's purposes and then to produce extraordinary results a very fair definition of the anointing so immediately that tells you that that empowerment, that legitimization comes from God and belongs to him. 
now the challenge with many people is when it because of the the seeming autonomy and liberty that happens in the presence of the anointing you find out that people misuse the anointing because i can walk in the flesh i may want to make a name for myself right now and i can tell you there's someone here the power of god will come on and you will be shocked to see that it will happen but you will have to vet it from the lens of god's desire to know whether he was the one who directed that or it was just flesh are you seeing that now just because it happened did not necessarily mean it accomplished the purposes of god this is where the abuse of the anointing comes when i become a recipient of the anointing it is within my power to misuse it are we together and many sadly have misused the anointing for the gratification of the flesh many have misused the anointing for financial gains many have misused the anointing for all kinds of reasons so the anointing is god's ability at work in a human or a material vessel to accomplish his purposes and to produce extraordinary or supernatural results I don't need to go into the subject of results we already settled that last week and I pray that by now you see that if your Christian experience is barren of results Jesus Christ will never truly be glorified in your life I hope we're done with that I'm sure that we've settled that already that in our lives manifesting extraordinary results Jesus is glorified and we the saints also are glorified John 17 and verse 1 the prayer of Jesus he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said father the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so two people are being glorified here the son is glorified the father is glorified hallelujah it is very important to understand this subject of the anointing I have had the honor and the privilege of talking praying with so many ministers of the gospel through the years and most times because of the privilege of what God has done and continues to do in and through my life when I meet ministers usually the prayer all they want is an impartation of grace they will tell you sincerely apostle I'm not getting this result I'm not getting that result I don't know why it's like that I just need that engracing so subconsciously most people know that every time your life is barren of results in addition to the principles you may learn there has to be an engracing upon you to produce those possibilities i have said it and i will repeat myself here in koinonia please listen to me as a human being unassisted by any spiritual agency there is only so much you can do there is a certain degree of results there is a threshold of results and manifestation of possibilities that when you cross it tells men that you are no longer alone there has to be a spirit agency that is assisting you are we together whether in business whether in ministry it is impossible as a human being unassisted to produce certain dimensions of results it cannot happen This is very important now listen very carefully why do we need the anointing let's answer the question why this also tells you the the there are two primary assignments of the anointing and i want you to understand this they may not be the only ones but according to my study of scripture and even in my experience and the experience of so many who have been given unusual access to the anointing we learn that the anointing is useful in the life of the believer for two principal reasons number one the anointing empowers the believer to subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom why do we need the anointing number one the anointing empowers the believer to subdue the anointing empowers the believer 
to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom so the first assignment of the anointing is to provide empowerment to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and the advancement of the kingdom is satan fighting your destiny and my destiny absolutely how long for as long as you will be alive are we together psalm 66 and verse 3 it has become an anthem in this ministry say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you is god's servant bishop david Oedipo who would say that the only language satan understands is the language of power and he's right satan does not understand english does not understand french satan does not understand negotiation the only thing he understands is power ask egypt um, israel in egypt nine plagues and satan through pharaoh would not let them go but one last plague and it compelled him to let them go so the anointing addresses satan now it's very very important for you to understand this you see satan is spirit satan is not flesh it is not only god who is spirit alone satan is also spirit do you know what that means you cannot arrest him number two you can't take him to a court number three the military cannot help you fight him number four you cannot set him on fire all the things you do to men to find peace you cannot do with him satan is spirit the angels the fallen angels and all the demons and the cohorts of hell they are spirits even though their damage is not spiritual alone their damage starts from the realm of the spirit but it has a physical expression in your life when the devil plants sickness in your body it can start from a dream but it will not end at a dream it will manifest physically and you will see the injury you will see the pain when satan programs disfavor upon a believer it can start from the realm of the spirit but you will shockingly see it manifest physically are we together so it takes the anointing to be able to subdue the forces of darkness let me tell you this do you know every time you stand before god's people please look up to make an altar call i want you to know that we are not the only ones who are seeing you angels are witnesses to that salvation that prayer demons are also witnesses from the day you declare the lordship of jesus christ an intentional line has been drawn between you and satan for the rest of your life whether you are alive except you die but provided you are alive satan is interested in you apostle who did i offend that's not the issue when you were saying jesus i love you you are a potential threat to the kingdom of darkness satan does not give you a chance to grow before he attacks you he knows what the life of god is and he knows what you received even though you don't know it you may you may trivialize what you received but satan understands the implication of being saved in fact satan does not even wait for you to be saved the moment you are born if you just if you are born and you appear just with a spirit he won't really bother you because you don't have the legitimate ground to function on the earth but the moment you manifest with this material body you are already a potential threat that's why you read in the bible satan killed children he didn't even give them a chance to grow are we learning why do we need the anointing so that we can have that empowerment to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and fighting against the advancement of the kingdom it was jesus that was speaking and he said right from the days of john the baptist he says the kingdom suffered violence and he said the violent will take it by force are we together the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness it is true when you leave satan unhindered he will kill everything he can kill he will steal everything he can steal he will destroy everything he can destroy 
John 10:10. 10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan's tripartite signature. The moment if you are unsure who is around, verify it with these tripartite activities. If Satan comes, he will never leave you the way he met you. He must steal something. If Satan comes and passes you and you are alone, except God helped you or intercession saved you, or it's not him. But if it is Satan, you know, there are people called pick. There are these boys that are experts in stealing. They can lift their hands and still steal. <laughs> Praise God. They can pass you with their hands lifted and yet something will still be missing. And it's not diabolism. How they... And, Praise the name of the Lord. So Satan is like that. He can pass through your finances. He can pass through your marriage. He can pass through the life of your children. He can pass through your spiritual life. He can pass through your destiny. He can pass through a church. He can pass through a ministry. He can pass through the life of a man of God. You know it is him because something must be stolen. Something must seem to die something must seem to be destroyed someone shout no way no shout way. it again say no way. no way because for some of you before now you've not seen the necessity for the anointing and satan keeps camping you around that mindset and say are you an apostle no are you a prophet no are you not just a businessman don't mind them he's cheating you let me just advise you right now especially because of this end times the condition for being anointed is that you are alive. The moment you are alive, just know that Satan will come to you. If he has not come, the messengers are on their way. But through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves. Let me prophesy to someone that any force that has refused to let you go, in the name of Jesus and by the power that raised Christ from the dead, he must give up on you finally. Please sit down. Hear me, your business will not just grow. Uh -uh. Your children will not just be responsible people. The ministry will not just grow. Your political career will not just flourish. There is a devil who is determined to make sure everything God in your life dies. Are we together? It will tear your relationship between you and your wife tear your relationship between you and your children destroy your finances until he reduces you to ashes mess up your ministry until you become a testimony of pain and shame satan for you when he does it he will sign it like julius berger will build and write signed everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen what makes you believe satan will fold his arms and watch you promoted you think he does not know what your influence will do to the kingdom man of god what makes you believe that Satan will sit down and allow you to continue to be a rising voice. You think he does not know what your voice will do to your territory. Hmm. Oh, Zechariah and Elizabeth. It's not about barrenness. It's about John. Who will anoint Jesus. There are many battles today that many of you are fighting that has nothing to do with you. It is because of something that will come out from you. Listen, when you see Satan fighting your family, what is, what is finance? Does he eat naira and cobble and dollars? He knows that with that empowerment, you will send your son to a mission school. And in that mission school, one day a prophet or apostle will visit that school. He will have an encounter and he will find his purpose and become a mighty man of God. So it will make sure that school fees never enters your hand. Help that woman, please. I can tell you firsthand, every time you see the devil around your life, he's not there to advise you. He's not there to counsel you. 
He's there to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Help that lady, please. Listen. Listen. Can I be honest with you? I have seen many demon spirits in my life. I'm not telling you what I just read in scripture. If you ever see men excelling in spite of Satan, something is keeping him. You don't want, listen to me. For thousands of years of Satan as a defeated foe, he has still not given up on fighting God. You have to understand the person you are dealing with. You will think after the millions of years of his rebellion, he should just give up one day. Satan is as determined today as he was when he left heaven. What kind of a creature is that? Even some of the capons, some of the armed robbers, some of the terrorists, they got to a point where they were broken like children. Have you ever seen Satan repenting? Have you ever seen his picture on his knees saying, God, just punish me, but I'm ready for peace. Most people do not know the person they are dealing with. If you think oppressing you for 30 years will make Satan say it's enough, think again. Apostle, he has tied down my ministry for five years. One day go better. Satan, go and read your Bible. A man who was thrown from heaven and after millions of years, he is still determined to thwart the purposes of God. Is there is anything to learn from Satan is determination. Can I tell you, you were born in the middle of an old story that has nothing to do with you. But simply because you found yourself in that space called the earth, you better find out the rules of engagement. Otherwise, you will find out that your life will become a casualty that you know nothing about. I remember years ago, a gentleman, true story, the moment he became 13, someone slapped him in his dream. 13 years. And when he came and met me and he was talking, you know, a little boy was in one of the schools then in Zaria and all of that. And he came those times, I used to just see them. And he was telling me that somebody slapped him. Do you know, true story, when he was talking to his father, the father said describe who slapped you and that was exactly what happened to the father i don't know if it was around that time but at least as a teenager you know what the spirit was saying welcome to a battle that your being part of this bloodline has forced you you must be interested in what we are dealing with are we together why do we need the anointing because there is a real devil there are real spirits mother the devil will not fold his arms and watch your five ten eight children rise up to become responsible people no his joy is to steal to kill and to destroy you would think if you start crying once satan will pity you find out who he is there are people crying in hell if he's to pity anybody he will start with them not you I don't know about you but for me i've made up my mind as a covenant with god i have no negotiation with satan there are no discussions every time me and he meet he already knows i'm saying this because some of you have allowed the devil lie to you you are a woman don't get into these spiritual things some of you, you are a man. Some of you, you are not a prayer warrior. You don't let the devil keep deceiving you and destroy your life. Let me tell you this. See, when Satan wants to destroy a family, his first target is the strongest person spiritually. I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. He is not stupid. He will afflict with sickness. He will afflict with pain. He will afflict with frustration. So that when you go down spiritually, that hindrance has cleared the way. He will now settle down and attack. Someone blasts in the spirit in one minute. Not my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Help those under the anointing. Shkete bakatos kote katabaria. 
in jesus name please sit down let me tell you something please listen to me listen to me listen to me i will not go ahead of myself there is a separate series on deliverance that one will announce it and i will settle down and teach you but can i tell you this i don't mean to scare you but africa listen to me if you are a firstborn listen to me if you are a first male listen to me if you are a last child listen to me if you are a breadwinner listen to me if you are the one who lifts up the head of your family listen to me satan he attacks but there is a protocol to the attack so much ignorance in the body of christ listen please look up look up i want you to pay attention don't you think i'm wasting your time if you are the first to be educated the first for your head to be lifted in your family the first go and read the bible about the laws firstborns not just the first to come out of the womb the first to do anything in life do you know why because the first of anything is the seed and the pattern the first to open a door for a family is the first to create the pattern the first to break out of poverty you think the devil will fold his arms and watch you the first man of god from your village the first man of god from your family the first professor the first married man the first married woman Praise God. Please sit down. Let me try to organize myself this night. Just help those under the anointing. I tell you, God is doing many things as I'm speaking. You came to church. This is Koinonia. No waste of your time at all. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me let me tell you one of the ways that satan moves is called the power of patterns you know what patterns are patterns are repetitive occurrences you find out god forbid don't feel bad your grandmother was raped your mother was raped your daughter was raped they never shared it with themselves yet the pattern will find itself again somebody spent 10 years in america returned back to nigeria like an arm robber another person spent 10 years in us or in in in, in, in um, london returned back all those things are patterns let me tell you what patterns are patterns are sponsored by altars even if the initiators of the altars go the altars are still valid they will speak that is the reason why you see nations go through patterns regions go through patterns individuals go through patterns families go through patterns even ministries go through patterns the anointing is not for preachers not the end time anointing the anointing is not just for men of god the anointing is not just for adults Help that person, please. I have seen wickedness in the lives of people. I have seen Satan dis destabilize the joy and the peace of families. I've seen great men of God with potentials to do things for the kingdom. 
but satan just brought them down i've seen business people who would have been the crown of their regions can i tell you the truth believe me when i tell you satan is not a friend learn from his rebellion and his unbendedness satan has never told god sorry he will never tell man sorry just believe that about him so when satan comes around your life and acts like a friend beware of what you are playing with you are not just playing with fire satan is every other thing but he's not stupid and he's not foolish he has an advantage of age and he's using it well please sit down why do we need the anointing to empower the believer to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and fighting against the advancement of the kingdom mm. number two why do we need the anointing the second reason why we need the anointing is so that we can tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities why do we need the anointing to empower us to tap into the dimension of supernatural possibilities results and possibilities that are beyond the realm and the scope of humans in ministry in business in politics you think daniel became an extraordinary politician in a harsh climate just because he could speak good english no even the people consulted through divination and they found out that the spirit of god they called it the gods was upon him they knew that this man was not ordinary and through the dispensation of three or four kings he still remained on top why do we need the anointing to empower us to manifest dimensions of supernatural possibilities hmm. I made up my mind as a person and as a man of God that I will never be ordinary that my life and everything about it will be extraordinary always not just because I want a name for myself not at all because I have found out that when you follow the natural course of things time will cheat you men will cheat you systems will cheat you you need to have an advantage that is beyond the natural course are we together it's good to follow the laws of prosperity i have taught you but following only the natural laws of prosperity save journey you will see when god will bless you or you will see when you'll be empowered in this wicked and evil world when you are one lord to break through an evil man will reverse you back to start again more than compliance with the laws they are there and they are important i've taught you but there has to be an engracing that can pick you on the wings of the spirit remember that the unit of destiny is time that's why god brought possibilities like speed like restoration these are forces that insist and ensure that you live a victorious life are we learning now in acts chapter 7 and verse 22 let's look at two scriptures very quickly acts chapter 7 and verse 22 media please help us the bible says and moses was learned in all the wisdom of the egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds look at such a man do you know what that meant even though he was not an egyptian he did not have the history there was a supernatural engracing upon him he learned the wisdom of the egyptians he was mighty both in words and in deed they were preparing Moses already. The level of excellence from his life, he was inevitably going to be the next Pharaoh. That's why when he returned, you see, as at the time Moses returned back to Egypt, the Pharaoh he left had died. It was his son, Ramesses, who was his friend. That was why when Moses looked at him and said, Pharaoh, 
I'm sure Ramesses will look at him and say, Dear brother, good to see you after over 40 years. The only difference is that you have returned back stupid. You were wiser when you left. You've forgotten that this is Egypt. You come and stand looking like a fugitive with a staff and tell me some deity you met in the forest said I should come and release these people who have been in captivity for 430 years. Moses, you have the wisdom of the Egyptians. And he said, all right, I'm not here for a long story. Let the rods. I told you that they are also preachers. I finished my preaching. Let the rod start his own sermon. And when he threw the rod, it became a serpent. I can imagine Pharaoh laughing and saying, you still remember? And he called Janus and Jembes, the wizards of Egypt. And they came and made caricature of the rod of Moses. They threw Pharaoh's rod. It also became a serpent. And God used that. Most of you have not discerned the sermon of the rods. Those rods preached a message that you need to understand. You have heard the sermon of men, but understand the sermon of the rods. Do you know what happened? The rod that became a serpent ate that of the man and did not increase in size and he picked it up. That is a sermon. Dominion over time and matter is real dominion. God was saying something there. Oh, but I'm not impressed enough. And then one plague after another. You can see that Pharaoh was not a normal human being. You can see the Luciferian manifestation. This is why some of you need to pray for your children. You flog them, they come back and see misbehave. They come out of jail. They come out of the prison cell. Will you do it again? No. Two days, they are back again. It's not normal. That determination is not a human determination. It came from, it's an antichrist spirit empowering people like that. There are people when they are going back to prison, they don't even ask them any questions. They just say, just pass, go back. Just go register your name, change your clothes, and go in there. <laughs> Can I tell you this? Creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. The sons of God are not here to repeat science. Science is an advantage. But believe me, God didn't take us this far to just come and be scientific. I, I, I guarantee you, it doesn't take fasting to be scientific. It doesn't take Bible study to be scientific. What we are manifesting is higher than science. He did not just bring us to, to just do sociology or to do all of... No, 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 no. There will be a spectacular display before Jesus Christ comes. The manifestation of a godlike dimension of power and grace in and through the saints it has been written so that it will not be changed the bible we will begin to see people manifest dimensions of intelligence i do i say this i like to study a lot about the world and all of that i like to study about ufos aliens for some reason i find those things interesting since i don't watch movies and all of that i now focus on those things and i read some of the ancient science that you know they tell us we are not alone you know there are all kinds of people around the world these ones these species of people and then i just read up all those things and in my mind i said no wonder human beings behave the way they behave there is a minimal level of wickedness that a normal human being should have when your wickedness stretches beyond that border it's not you again it's you and another spirit is that true no matter how wicked men are there is a limit when your wickedness stretches beyond a certain threshold you are empowered by a spirit the same way human beings cannot love and be kind beyond a certain threshold when you move past that threshold you are not alone too there has to be a spirit empowering you we need to be supernatural people you see our world today and i don't mean to cause trouble across the body of christ but we have to be careful there is a gradual exaltation of philosophies and science above the supernatural why because a lot of people just believe that societies and territories have been changed through their reception of science we're not against that 
but let me tell you sincerely this faith walk that we are part of it came by a supernatural means it is sustained by a supernatural means find out how we are going to leave the earth it's not scientific what is the skyscraper that will take us to heaven with one last that blast of a trumpet those who are dead in Christ will rise explain the name of the scientific process that gives them new bodies immediately what is it called explain the name of the scientific process that suddenly withdraws gravity and we who are alive and shouting the name of Jesus will be on our way going and those who are laughing at us will wave them and say I told you I gave you a chance explain the name of that scientific process am I against science not at all but let us be careful because the flesh realm including science is Satan's domain he does not want you to rise or see reality beyond the three-dimensional plane because provided you are under the influence of the three-dimensional realm you are in Satan's domain he can manipulate systems and structures he can play around with your mind and destroy your destiny but when you rise to that realm and that plane, your life becomes extraordinary. We have so many doctors in this ministry. There are many professionals. It is not unusual that if someone is sick, the natural course is to administer a treatment and that is wonderful. But what if the doctor is not there? and that person may not have the chance to see the doctor is there a possibility of administering something powerful who taught the doctor that you can stand before a tree and pick a leaf and process it in a lab and it becomes an injection and you put it in someone even the doctors depend on the supernatural for treatment the injection does not get to your heart when they put that injection wherever it enters your body they leave the rest do you not know that every other thing that happens is a miracle? I read a bit about the human body and I'm surprised at the many activities that happen in the human body. Do you know when a human being is sleeping, science tells us and medicine tells us, do you know how many activities in your body shut down just because you are sleeping? That means if as you are awake looking at me now, you may think it's just your heart and maybe your brain that is working. Think again. If you know the, the it's almost like a riot in your body. All the things, the cells working, if you don't understand, they repeat it again. This body is as busy as anything. And yet there is an invisible hand that keeps it. Every time I'm in the air, I think about a lot of things if I'm not sleeping. And one of the things I think about is the miracle of a material body that was created from metals. Runs and then lifts. And now we are above the clouds and we are under the mercy of the creator. I'm not, I'm not talking about the dexterity of the plane moving. I'm saying literally for 50 minutes or 5 hours or whatever hours, you are under the mercy of the creator. Do you know that if that plane goes down, there is no amount of... The, you, you can see the limitation. Flying helps me to know where science ends. The moment they lift, science says I've tried. Whatever you believe, let it continue with you. When you are coming down, come down to my realm. I will pick it up from where I'm limited and land you safely. And the plane is moving. And I'm sure that God watches in heaven. And he's just saying, oh dear. These people do not even know who is flying them. It's not like they met him to verify whether he's drunk, whether he's all right, whether he fought with his wife, whether he's under a psychological problem, you just know that the owner of the plane gave the man the, the, the access and you now had your confidence to sit down there. Why wouldn't I trust God? Listen, I travel a lot and if I can place my destiny in the hands of an airline, 
God bless them. A number of them are my people. I, God bless you. I'm not, I'm not speaking against them. Literally. When we are flying in the night, I don't know where we are. I don't know where. We, we believe everything they tell us. And yet these are human beings that can make mistakes. Nobody ever says, verify that we are, we are you know. How are you sure we are safe? And yet the creator of the ends of the earth, when he now beckons that we trust him, we bring all kinds of flimsy reasons and say, God, before I take this step, prove to me. Yet we jump into the plane and sit down quietly. I'm using flight because almost everybody here or many of us here are maybe frequent flyers in some way. Just see what you do every day and every time. What of the driver that drives you? You've been hearing that they are kidnapping, yet you are still going to travel tomorrow. You would think that will make you afraid. You will still go and come back. The longest sea journey I've had was one hour, 20 minutes or so. I made up my mind that I won't repeat that again. 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 Not from the Riverine area. I've made my contribution as far as my experience is concerned my goodness let me tell you when you are and, and these are military people carrying me they are not amateurs I just said lord well for me to live is christ and to die is gain if i die the only thing is that i didn't finish my assignment but at least are we blessed we need to tap into supernatural dimensions of the power of God. Everything that is natural has a supernatural expression. I repeat, everything that is natural has a supernatural expression. When you go to the market and you meet a trader, you say, I want to buy a wrapper. They will ask you original or um, what's the other, or original or maybe imitation depending on whatever money you have. There is one that looks like it, but it's not it. There is one that is really it. Everything that is natural is like that imitation. There is an original. The Bible says everything that appears, Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 and 3, that it came from a realm that is unseen. Hear me. There is a natural cause of prosperity, but there is supernatural prosperity. There is a natural medical cause of healing, but there is supernatural healing. There is a natural cause for growth, but there is supernatural growth. The choice is yours. They both have their consequences. If you choose to live a natural life, there are many, many, many things that you will be limited. You will not be able to do many things. But you can choose to command the supernatural even in your life. Are we blessed? So the supernatural grants you empowerment to subdue the forces fighting against your destiny and against kingdom advance. And then it empowers you to rise to a dimension where you command supernatural possibilities. Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 36. Luke chapter 1, very quickly please. Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 to 36 need to run through a few things very quickly so we'll pray Luke chapter 1 from verse 30 now this is Mary and the angel said unto her Mary now fear not Mary for thou hast found favor with God and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus we're reading to 36 he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end now Mary said to the angel how shall these things be seeing I know not a man you know what Mary is saying Mary is saying listen I it would have been believable 
if there is a process a natural cause of how things should be from a biological angle but there is a deficiency here how will it happen because i didn't hear you mention a man it is possible that god will speak to you and the natural formula for that result you will not mention it don't forget that it is god who is speaking are we together yes the natural course was to wait for the angel to steer the water and whoever jumps in first but when jesus came jesus would have said i empower you with wisdom and the prophetic to know when an angel is going to come so that you will jump before the rest jesus said listen i don't negate the rule but i can change it because i am god ah if you prosper in one year naturally chances are excellent that you may be a thief or a fraudster you know all these kinds of things because you should be able to build with dignity and honor are we are we are we together now but god can come to you and say because of the cry of your mother and the burden of 10 of your siblings allowing you to go through the natural course of life investing slowly gradually receiving 10 percent every year until you are 10 years by the time that will happen your your parents would have gone and you may not have the opportunity for that prophetic word i gave them so there is something i'm going to do in your life that in one year now when it happens you will not go around telling people don't follow the natural course of growth that would be erroneous but you will know that your life was an exemption are we together and the hand of the lord came upon elijah when you want to go from one place to the other if you have a boat or a camel or a donkey you use it but in this case the hand of the lord came upon elijah and another rule was created to him do you know why i'm telling you this keep learning the laws of the kingdom keep learning the laws of life but don't be surprised when an invisible hand picks you and moves you beyond the natural sequence of things i believe this I believe in diligence I will always teach diligence are we together but like I would always share there are times that your boat is fine there are times your fishing net is fine oh Peter there are times you are in the sea but you will still not catch fish that is not an issue of laziness the fish didn't come it's no longer your fault at that point you don't need skills again you need the one who created the fish to gravitate them towards you and say cast your net to its right side and in a moment you will catch fish that your boat will begin to sink hallelujah it is natural for you to start a business and then look for customers build a clientele gradually through integrity trustworthiness and after five years you would have gained experience made your mistakes failed cried prayed on god sown seeds and then you stabilize but god can decide in one year somebody can call you and mentor you and say you will be the african distributor of this product just like that and you are putting your hand on your head is it not in your bible that when the lord turned again the captivity of zion he said we were like them that dream what kind of miracle will make unbelievers join in the testimony hear me believers let us maintain the natural course of things based on the laws of life i am not teaching you to ignore the laws of life but woe betides anybody who laughs at the possibility of a dimension higher than science higher than sociology this is my problem with intelligent people and secular humanists they negate the fact that there is a god in heaven and there is a possibility to tap into that infinite power go to the village and they will tell you there is a natural cause there is a way you can plant crops and everything will grow but there is a way you can have an accelerated harvest do you want it when you say yes they will not say go and stand in the farm they will say go and meet a man there is something he will give you there is the natural cause of politics you can vote you can campaign you can talk to people they can help you you can grow you can build but there is, we have seen it in this nation where god picked people you know this one it was god that lifted them hallelujah i heard of somebody true story 
who bought a property it was worth some millions of naira this guy brought a, pro a property it was not up to two weeks there was a company that wanted that property but they were going through a protocol to meet the owner and quickly some money came for that guy and he bought that property from the former owner and they suddenly called him that there is a company that want to buy it it was almost 10 times the amount this boy stood in shock they were desperate for that land the owner that sold it to him wanted to make trouble and say return he said no 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 we finished our transaction this is between me and these people I, I mean it i'm not exactly if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking that was how this guy's life changed overnight many people suspected him of fraud he said i'm not i'm not a fraudster it was just the favor of god now the balance in church is that because of teachings like this many believers become irresponsible you see that they negate the natural course of things and they say since there is favor since there is speed why should i be diligent why should i build on relationships i'm not teaching you to ignore these laws but i'm teaching you that in addition let it be at the back of your mind you can produce posters as a man of god you can produce handbills billboards you can invite people do evangelism but you know like i know that there is a limit you can do the best that you can do and someone can just frown and say pastors who eat people's money wicked people that's the comment they will give but there is a grace that can come upon you and can compel all and sundry to come and see what jesus is doing this one is not charm this one is not um, whatever it is it is the hand of god find out what was on jesus that made five thousand people to climb a mountain with him and stay there must i climb a mountain to hear him is someone learning now please let me have your attention do you know why i'm happy for you because what is coming on you this night you will marvel and wonder at what begins to happen in your life everything you have seen natural believe me when i tell you you are about to experience the extraordinary dimension of the same thing and i hope you believe what i'm saying please sit down let me give you very quickly three keys or yeah three keys and then very quickly we'll discuss how to receive the anointing and then we'll pray pay attention now in Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 let's rush Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 it says then he answered and spake unto me saying to Zerubbabel now this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel and it applies to us he said not by might nor by power human power now and strength but by my spirit saith the Lord there are certain results that happens by the spirit and by the power of the Holy Spirit Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. Everyone, please read. The first sentence will end at Lord. Ready? One to read. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Truly, I am full of power to do ministry. I am full of power to do business. I am full of power for governance and politics. I am full of power as a prayer warrior, power as a prophet, power as an apostle power as a kingdom financier truly i am full of power the anointing of the holy spirit truly i am full of power luke chapter 4 please let's just go to verse 14 for sake of time maybe 13 and 14 this was a temptation of jesus christ and the bible says and when the devil had ended all the temptation he departed from him for a season read 14 with me if you desire this ready one to read and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went about a fame of him through all the region 
round about it takes power to gain visibility you can be sincere you can have a message but it takes power for your generation to hear you many of us this, it is this empowerment part remember i've taught you that the greatest need of an unsaved person the greatest need of an unbeliever is what salvation the greatest need of a saved believer is transformation and that's through the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the word but the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment for many of us i give it to you that you have experienced a dimension of commendable transformation but you need the grace to defend the things you know in this kingdom we not only hear we hear and see is that true Acts chapter 8 from verse 5 Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them the Bible says verse 6 the Bible says and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake hearing and seeing in this kingdom we don't hear alone God can lift God can bless God can change stories we need to see you both hear and see for some of you people have only heard of what God can do through you in this season they will begin to see it very quickly I'm not going to explain it I'll just give it out very quickly because there's something I want us to press on there are four keys four keys that are responsible for spiritual empowerment you want to encounter the anointing there are four keys four demands and then I will now teach you how to receive are you ready number one consecration and intimacy with God the first requirement if it is genuine power you want the power of consecration and intimacy with God first John chapter 2 please from verse 15 please hurry up hurry up first John love not the world neither the things that are in the world can you imagine that to receive the power that gives you everything you need to lose the passion for everything that is in the world love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world now look at this kind of look at this thing now it says love not the world is the word eros many theologians and many people have mistaken this to mean don't love prosperity don't love increase that's not what the bible is teaching the word love is the word eros that means an ungodly affinity an attachment towards things that takes the place of christ in your life are you getting the point now god is not against us prospering god is not against us having influence what he's against is exalting those things and having an obsession that it dethrones christ in your life any kind of money that jesus must be dethroned for you to have it is useless any kind of lifting that jesus must be dethroned for you to have it is useless anything god gives satan will try to give it to you too but the condition is bow down and worship me that was what he brought to jesus the three hebrew boys remember satan is obsessed with worship transgenerational allegiance do you know the reason why god cannot trust many people with his anointing is because they are not set apart to look beyond themselves and to see Jesus lifted I think it was in Lagos or so I was teaching was it yesterday now or day before yesterday and I was telling them I said you know not every closed door is demonic there are certain doors is God that closed it by himself as an act of his mercy because he has weighed you and found out that if that door is opened 
the the existence of the flesh within you there are people no matter how they fast and pray for the prophetic they will not receive that grace do you know why because if you actually receive the creative dimension of the prophetic in anger you will cause and kill people because you are angry you will kill more dead bodies you will be cooperating with satan because of anger so god will rather withdraw it until that intimacy with the holy spirit and that transformation is there there are many people including preachers there are certain anointings if god gives you today you will not pray again why will you pray when people will travel from several nations and will pay everything to come and meet the great man of god apostle joshua selman what do you need prayer for again what do you need fasting for again can i tell you this if it is the anointing you want to receive is more than your money you can drop your seed and god says nonsense carry your money and go away it is your heart i'm looking for prayer and fasting is important but let me tell you before your prayer and fasting will make sense and have value in the spirit your heart condition must be right the desire and the desperation to see jesus revealed and glorified in your life do you know you always hear me give this example imagine that god opens your eyes to the prophetic and a millionaire or a billionaire billionaires are all over your church or your ministry you literally can look at them and god opens your eyes and you see what they have in their account you've already bought sharp sand to build your house and you are limited there's there's no money you've calculated everything your engineer has told you 300 million will build a solid structure for you and the people trust you that's when you will know whether you are saved or not because one spectacular prophetic word and you see human beings when they trust you they become vulnerable to you sincerely you can tell someone look you have one billion two hundred and fifty thousand ah yes that's true oh yeah the other part i won't touch the one billion but that other slice give on to caesar what you, know, you can twist anything and just because you are talking and the person is falling while you are talking does not mean it is god that is behind it you see i told you that you can misuse the anointing there is a level of charismatism that the anointing brings there is an aura it's a fragrance it can attract everything to you that is the reason why people have to be dead to self are we together consecration and intimacy proverbs 23 and verse 26 this has become an anthem in my life and i'm praying that someone will finally get that revelation please look up my son give me mine give me thine many people are giving god offerings many people are giving god pulpit god does not want your pulpit he's not looking for your offering your tithe all of those things are secondary let me tell you sincerely if you want power with god koinonia hear me what god wants is your heart i can tell you by the authority of scripture by the privilege of learning from the fathers and by my own experience if you are genuinely anointed genuinely anointed of god there is almost a godlike worship that people can bring around you because of the all surpassing manifestation of the excellency of god in your life even you sometimes you will look at yourself and say my god who am i i know what the anointing can do believe me and if you are not broken before god and especially our generation of ministers small grace here small anointing and that's it you see people misbehaving all around with the anointing small prophetic small apostolic and all kinds of things and god just withdraws the more he wants to give you because when god tests you with it you are rude you are lawless you are indisciplined you are you are you are rebellious you don't have any regard for authority god says no this little we've given this guy let's leave it there if we multiply this anointing you will kill everybody it means people will start kneeling down lick your shoe worship you call you king of kings then they will receive healing and go another person will do that kind of thing go and read the stories of people i'm not being sarcastic 
who did not allow God to walk on their hearts preachers let me encourage you co-laborers in the gospel let's be careful how we impart graces on people just because people are committed and their hearts are open does not mean they are prepared let God vet them so that you do not anoint people who will be a casualty to you and others history has taught us a lesson anointing people unprepared will always lead to casualty we are all students in the school of the spirit don't get me wrong it's like carrying your car and giving your 12 or 13 year old child the way children are brilliant now one can even drive with his eyes closed children are, have mastered the art of surprising everybody But the chances are excellent that that child he will most likely be the only one with that car among his contemporaries and his pride not incompetence that will kill that child do you know what it means to carry the grace that grants you access to the destinies the loyalty the finances of people it was a father in the lord baba adeboe who made a statement one time and he said by the grace of god if he needs a shirt today by the privilege of the influence God has given him he can make one statement and say brethren I need a shirt and he said literally without exaggeration his size can finish in the market because everyone will want to go and do you know what it means to have that level of influence don't tell me I will be fine are you seeing why God works on our hearts you can speak to someone and say in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord lift you and in two weeks he comes back he has become a billionaire and the person comes to you as a billionaire and say man of God I'm still your boy oh good news to the ear of a preacher a billionaire is your boy are you learning tonight while you are laughing please make sure you understand what I'm saying God demands death to the flesh if you must carry genuine power Billionaire is your boy and can say sir it looks like you are not happy is there any problem what can I do for you and Satan comes to stand by you and says is this how you are going to allow remember your childhood remember how you suffered now is your chance and yet the Spirit of God tells you do not touch one naira from that man rather sow into his life and bless him and you say I reject that spirit that that the spirit that is not an economist to use your brain and know that this will flow from I mean can you be so anointed that God places you in the midst of greatness and you still have self-control there are many wealthy people today who run away from churches respectfully speaking because they won't let them rest once the preacher is preaching he's looking at everybody but they know who he's talking to and the people say please it's not a cause to be blessed that's why most people don't testify because they know it's a risk oh this is what god has done we just floated two aircraft i mean one estate and all of that and the preacher is clapping and the man knows exactly what that clap means see I, I made a vow and a covenant that by the privilege of God's grace I'm not saying it by the strength of the flesh this ministry will never inconvenience anybody because of tea and bread if God will not provide the wisdom to fund this assignment I will honorably go back home and sit down it's better to sit down and not do ministry but have your integrity are we together now consecration and intimacy with God number two what is the second key that governs the manifestation of the anointing in your life honor to the Word of God if you do not live by the principles of the kingdom honor to the Word of God if you do not live by the principles of the kingdom you will never access the anointing please write it very quickly honor to the Word of God in Proverbs 23 verse 22 the B part where we just read he said my son give me thine heart Proverbs 23 26 it says and let your ears your eyes observe my ways John chapter 1 and verse 3 John chapter 1 and verse 3 
he says and without him the word all things were made by the word and without him the word was not anything made that was made are we together even the power of god hides in his word habakkuk chapter 3 it's become an anthem here to habakkuk chapter 3 we'll start from verse 3 and 4 god came from taman and the holy one from mount paran his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise verse 4 i wish we could have verse 4 in amplified otherwise no problem it says and his brightness was as the light he says rays streamed from his hand and there in that sun-like splendor was the hiding place of his power there is a relationship between the word of god and the power of god the second key is honor to the word of god i submit to you that i have a problem with people who manifest power and i cannot see in their lives honor for the word of god and the principles of the kingdom if you manifest power and you do not have honor for the word of God, you deserve to be suspected. Are we together? Because it's like seeing somebody with a child who you never saw pregnancy. Are we together? Your stomach was as flat as my own now and then immediately you just drag a child. No, we have a right to say whose child is this? And it's not maybe surrogacy or anything. You say it's my child that was pregnant. We need to examine that kind of pregnancy. That's how the word is and miracles on the supernatural. If you do not have honor to the word of God, we look at your life and we do not see that you understand the word of God. Believe me, do not blame people if they suspect the manifestations that come through your life. The word of God gives credence to the outworkings of his power in your life. Are we together? number three what is the third key that controls spiritual empowerment prayer with fasting for me it's not just prayer and fasting it is prayer with fasting the emphasis is prayer the fasting is an accelerator prayer with fasting Luke chapter 4 very quickly we'll look at verse 1 and 2 then we'll go to 14 and 15 Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 4, 1 and 2. The Bible talks about Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. So he was full of the Holy Ghost. He returned from Jordan and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Verse 2. He says, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And the Bible says, in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he was afterwards hungry. Let's jump for the sake of time to verse 14. You know his temptation, the three temptations and all of that. And the Bible says, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went about a fame all the regions round about. 15. It says, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. If you want to walk in genuine spiritual power, the facilitator of the anointing is prayer with fasting. There is nobody I know who genuinely commands the supernatural who is not a student of prayer with fasting. There are wrong fasts. There are religious prayers and fasting that does not carry any power. It's just a show of religiosity with no... It's just for health benefits. But there is the kind of fast God has commanded. And then according to James chapter 5, there is the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man that avails much. It, it has tremendous power. Dynamic in its working, Amplified says. Right for reference, James 5 from verse 13 to 18. James 5, 13 to 18. Are we together? The last now. The last key. Are you ready? The last key is impartation. 
impartation you want to access spiritual empowerment you want to access the anointing you need impartation what is impartation a system of transference of spiritual possibilities impartation is a way to transfer the power of god to transfer the possibilities that are in the christ through the holy spirit to you now here's where i want you to pay attention because we're wrapping up now commanding the supernatural part two we're examining the dynamics of the anointing the necessity for the anointing there are two principal platforms for impartation i want you to learn this now there are two principal platforms for impartation number one you can have an impartation directly from god impartation directly from god an example of this we see is first kings first kings chapter 3 when we begin our reading from verse 3 first kings chapter 3 from verse 3 down to 13 write it for reference please first kings 3 from verse 3 to 13 this was an encounter that solomon had with god he received the impartation of the grace and the anointing for understanding and wisdom directly from god solomon loved the lord walking in the statutes of his of david his father only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places the king went to gibeon and sacrificed there and he offered the sacrifice upon the altar verse 5 the bible says god came to solomon the lord appeared to solomon in a dream by night and god said ask what i shall give thee and solomon said thou hast shown unto thy servant david my father great mercy according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness in uprightness of heart with thee and thou hast kept for him this great kindness thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day what a good introduction and now O lord my god thou hast made thy servant king instead of david my father and i am but a little child i know not how to go out or how to come in and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that i may discern between good and bad for who is able to judge these thy great people every legal practitioner should pray this prayer hearing is a secret to excel in your legal practice this man is praying and saying i need to judge people i need grace from you because these people are great the complications around their lives i need an anointing more than just my technical know-how the bible says and the speech pleased the lord that solomon asked this thing almost there and god said unto him because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself long life do you know that there are graces controlling this long life or ask riches or ask the life of your enemies but you have asked understanding to discern judgment here's what god gave him behold i have done according to thy words i have given thee who gave him god directly i've given you a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither shall neither after thee shall any rise like unto you last verse and i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches how do you give riches did he give him money so what exactly is riches god is saying i'm giving you something now i'm giving you riches i'm giving you honor so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto you all thy days solomon woke up in the morning and supernatural manifestation of wisdom with wisdom came wealth and every other thing you can receive directly from god number two what is the second platform for receiving impartation impartation can come as impartation from the careers of the anointing 
or the second way you can receive the anointing now is impartation from the careers of the anointing it is true that there are men that carry this anointing in matthew chapter 25 and verse 9 the parable of the ten virgins remember the foolishness of the five virgins they were all virgins so it was not about the issue of being in the fold or not being in the fold their foolishness was because they did not know how to access the anointing here was the recommendation given to them the wise answered saying not so lest there be not enough for us he says but go ye rather to them that sell and buy when it has to do with the anointing there are those who sell the word sell there does not just mean it means exchange there are custodians of the anointing he says if you want the anointing go to them that sell and buy how do you buy it you buy with honor you buy with meekness these are currencies every dimension of anointing you need in your life today believe me there are vessels that carry it bodily right now under a certain condition it can flow freely to you there are three conditions that you must satisfy if you must receive the anointing from careers number one is called genuine connection or genuine followership the first condition you want to receive the anointing from a genuine career of it you need genuine heart-to-heart -heart connection genuine followership as we see in the case of elijah and elisha second kings chapter 2 from verse 1 to 15 just write it for reference second kings chapter 2 from verse 1 to 15. so three conditions if you want to receive impartation from a vessel that has been trusted by god number one is genuine connection number two honor I've taught you here that honor is the key for access honor what is honor the discerning the celebrating and if need be the rewarding of people for their uniqueness genuine connection condition number one honor condition number two number three service service is a jackpot gateway into the anointing now let's look at a few instances of impartation and then we'll be ready to pray numbers chapter 11 we'll read 16 and 17 then we'll go to 24 and 25 this was moses now and the lord said unto moses gather unto me 70 men of the elders of israel whom thou knowest to be elders of the people notice those who were qualified for the impartation he did not gather children and lay hands on them an elder is one who has an advantage of knowledge and if need be experience i'm not saying god cannot anoint children but this is just to draw a lesson from it people who have been worked upon prepared whom thou knowest to be elders of the people and officers over them and bring them onto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand here with thee 17 and i will come down and talk with thee there and i will take of the spirit which is upon thee and i will put it upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone this is what god does not want this already cancels away this obsession for superstar christianity where just one person carries the anointing when you see most men of god stand like superstars they really don't want to be superstars is because most people have not paid the price to be partakers of that grace indeed you're not going to receive an anointing from a man of god with pride and carelessness and lack of discernment everybody who carries anything from god knows that it is the grace of god but believe me there was a price behind it and nobody would throw away anything valuable just on the floor are we together 
but then sadly there are other people who enjoy that obsession and would never give people a chance to partake of that grace isaiah 9 8 remember when he sent a word to jacob it lighted upon israel that means every time god anoints one person it is not just to remain with you you should be a distribution channel so that many other people can partake of that grace let's go back to our scripture where we were reading numbers 11 24 and 25 we have to rush numbers 11 24 and 25 and moses went out and told the people the words of the lord and gathered the 70 men and the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle verse 25 and the lord came down in a cloud and spake unto them and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it to the 70 elders and it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them they prophesied when the spirit rested upon them they prospered when the spirit rested upon them they became wise if the spirit rests upon you something must happen it is impossible the spirit there means the grace the grace cannot come upon you and you remain the same it's impossible when the spirit rested the bible didn't say when the spirit came to rest means you have found a habitation the anointing can come but it may not rest the performance happens for those who allow the anointing to rest genuine connection honor and service last scripture numbers chapter 27 from verse 18 and to 20 oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh, Yahweh, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Yahweh. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, Yahweh. Let your kingdom come. Let your will Hear me. We have gotten to the crescendo of this service and I want you to be sensitive. Believe me when I tell you, you have come for this service to receive something tonight. Numbers chapter 27 and the lord said unto moses take thee joshua the son of noon a man in whom the spirit is already on but there are dimensions that are not yet there lay thy hands upon him 19 and set him before eliaza the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight verse 20 and thou shalt put some of your honor you see that honor is a grace it is transferable put some of your honor upon him that all the congregation of the children of israel might be obedient if that grace is not on you as a leader nobody will listen to you you can be as disciplined as anything but if that grace is on you you Surprised that your words will fall on deaf ears. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. Let's read together. Are we ready? Inside, outside, everywhere. If you can see it, let's read. One to read. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom for moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of israel hearkened unto him and did as the lord commanded moses listen 
I can tell you at every point and at every junction in my life when what grace and what dimension came to my life I didn't start ministry with every anointing and every
on we are going to pray please even if you have never done it for one minute i want you to cry before the god of heaven this is my season of encounter with unction lord i open up my spirit go ahead and pray go ahead and pray pray let a man so account of us stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful cry unto God there are ministers who might be watching there are business people there are politicians hallelujah listen listen I knew that I had an apostolic call upon my life but I didn't know that I had the grace this grace they call the kingmaker anointing this is for politics and governance I'm not saying it because I'm, I'm, I fear God I'm, I'm not into politics Go and read about Samuel. There are graces you can literally enthrone people. That's what I told you in Koinonia. You don't invite people and say, Rich people, come. You make them by the anointing. Can I tell you this? Please do not allow the devil to cheat you tonight. I know there are people who say, Forget about this man of God. They are, they are all proud people. They all talk nonsense. I beseech you by the message of God. You are not discerning, you will pay the price for nothing. Only a sure will reign forever. To his kingdom there will be no end. Hallelujah. I remember there was a year this will be about the first time I'm making this kind of statement. There was a year that I had an audience with a particular politician somewhere. And I don't know what they told him about me. We had a nice time and he sat down. I'm not one who will go and start prophesying. I don't do that. It's not. I have an apostolic call. My focus is the edification of the body. And I looked at this man and he wanted to contest for something. And honestly, it is not pride. But in my mind, I said, oh dear. If this man, it looked to me like Jesus at the well with the Samaritan woman. I said, oh dear. The hymn writer said, oh, what needless pain we bear. At the end of it, he was just speaking English. You know, sometimes these are wonderful politicians can be proud people. They think every man of God is looking for money and all of that. And I was looking, he never requested for prayer. He never requested for anything. He was just making noise and I looked at him. And when he finished talking, I told him, I said, I'm sorry, sir, but I want to speak to you. And he was just making a jest and sarcasm. And I said, go and write it. You will win your primaries, but you will never win the election. And he was laughing because it was impossible based on what he wrote. I said, I know you have met men of God who prophesied and spoke because of monies that you gave them. But you will know that there are certain people who are remnants indeed. When this guy won the primaries, he was happy, very sarcastic statement and all of that. And when he lost the election, it was a shock. I remember I went to preach somewhere and they said, ah, the man that was around, he wanted to see me. I said, please don't bring that person there. No, I don't hate him. I don't fight with anybody. But can I tell you, please don't generalize people. There are people God has honored. I'm saying this for a reason. There is human worship, it is wrong. There are men of God who make themselves Alpha and Omega. The Bible says to minister according to the measure of grace. If you have not been anointed to enthrone government and enthrone people and you are just making noise, the disappointment will make the people arrest you one day and lock you because the grace is not on you. But can I tell you, 
God's system of king, priest, prophet has not failed. There are still men that God has anointed. There are graces that can enthrone. This is not just for politicians. A man overnight, you can send one word. Was it not Elijah who said, by this time? You've heard the testimonies. This is, there's nothing in this ministry that is stage managed. I want you to pray that one prayer. What dimension do you see God lifting you? Pray that the grace and the unction that will make it happen. Just help those under the anointing. Please pray. Believe me, there are mighty angelic activities happening in this place now. Dimensions in ministry. Dimensions in business. Dimensions in governance. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. Please pray. Please pray. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. I want to pray for you now. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. I want to pray for you. And I want you to believe what is coming upon you. You will command the supernatural. As many as we are here, so are our needs. And every dimension requires a grace. Therefore, I stand by the privilege of this election of grace. I stretch my hands from the north to the south. Parash Kadia. I'm telling you, I'm just in fire. This is what I'm saying. At the count of three, the unction required for the next season of your life. In the name of Jesus, help them please. At the count of three, like fire from heaven, it will come upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that, help them please, my God. Take that grace now. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, take that grace now. Have that woman, please. Take that grace now. Superior anointings. Parike, take it, take it up. Man of God, woman of God, I call for the apostolic. I call for the prophetic. I call for the evangelistic. Receive that grace. Take that unction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those in business. That grace of an entrepreneur. The grace that can subdue systems and structures and give you visibility. May that anointing rest upon you now. May that anointing rest upon you now. The anointing that brings speed into the life of a man. Acceleration is a possibility in this kingdom. Therefore, I stretch my hands may that mantle rest upon you now speed in destiny speed in your life help that woman please speed in your life i want to pray for you there is an anointing for influence and visibility you can do all you can and your generation will not know you are there but there is an unction that can come upon you 
and cause your voice to be heard i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and for those who are following and connecting by faith for some of you this anointing you will literally feel something physically coming on you as i'm praying in the name of the grace for visibility right now right now may that unction come upon you may that unction come back may that grace come upon you let me pray for everyone here who is part of this spiritual family and you are into politics and governance the grace that enthrones in the name of jesus the son of the living god may that unction rest upon you right now marvelously rest upon you right now hear me when it has to do with wealth and abundance there are principles of productivity value exchange increase relationships negotiations and all these are valid financial principles but there is a prophetic dimension to wealth there is wealth that comes from heaven he said by this time tomorrow i want to pray for you because for many people and many families this is the area of engracing things have been tied in your life i want you to believe it don't let the devil tell you that there is no prophetic dimension to wealth and by a prophet the lord god brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved i pray for you everyone who is in egypt financially hear the word of the lord i prophesy to you come out now come out now come out now the eyes that has refused to see you and favor you i open that eyes to see you the hand that has refused to whoever is responsible for partnership with the holy ghost for your rising by reason of this unction i declare your rising is confirmed now hallelujah hear me there are many of us who desire to walk in signs and wonders genuine miracles not fake stage managed miracles genuine healings genuine deliverance genuine signs and wonders some of you are here you are men of god some of you you are here into missions but it looks like there is no result some of you are even pastors and in all honesty you do not have consistent predictable ever increasing results by the privilege of the election of grace i stretch my hands towards you and i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead step into the realm of the miraculous now the final impartation and we're done see believe me when i tell you honor and favor are real no matter how sincere you are no matter what level of character and integrity you have if you do not have the grace for honor and the grace for favor you will not go far believe me when i tell you this i want to pray that grace upon your life it was a grace i pursued with hunger in my heart and when it came i knew it had come take over take over i have come to the end of my 
Take over, Jehovah. I have touched. Something is happening in this place. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I have come to the end of my There is an anointing called the Esther anointing. It was in 2010. 2009 2010 God opened my eyes to this mystery of the Esther anointing the grace that can pick you from Shushan and put you to sit in the palace I stretch my hands right now may that mantle for honor and favor that came upon Hadassah may that grace rest upon you now take that grace now take that grace now the grace that enthroned Haman will not stop you in the name of Jesus Christ. From today, everything that represents shame, an embargo of shame and disappointment over your life, I tear it like a veil. In the name of Jesus Christ. hear me for some of you i prophesy to you between now and sunday i stand by the god of heaven and i decree and declare every day of this week will open you up to a new chapter of strange manifestation hear me by reason of this grace you carry there are battles you will not need to fight. The jealousy of God will arise and fight it for you. Where your father could not cross, where your mother could not cross, hear me, what limited your father, what limited your mother, what limited those who had gone ahead of you, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic, I scatter it before you right now. I scatter it before you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody who has forgotten you because there were demonic manipulations that took you away from their memory. They promise they will be there and help you. But as it is right now, you will pass them and it's as if they are not seeing you. Go back with this unction this night and watch the wonder walking power of Jesus. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise. Wave it to the King of Kings. Wave it to Jesus. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Something has come upon your life. You are waving your hands and you are allowing the anointing rest. Oh, hallelujah, we give you praise. Our lives will never be the same. Never be the same. It will be proof that you are a people God has helped and God has blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ now listen very carefully next week there will be fire from heaven to the earth in this place hallelujah not only because it is a miracle service for the month of February please any point of contact you have your documents court case issues whatever has mocked God this is not idolatry please you can come with it as a point of contact because i'm going to be praying on it this is a year of marvelous life there are some things that must end are we together now please be intentional about what i'm telling you and then let me challenge you in writing your prayer request don't be careless if you are a couple for god's sake you try this sit with your spouse or even your children and agree what are we use the power of unity 
in writing your request and see what God will do most times we just stand husband is doing his own wife you can sit down with God I know the things God has already spoken to me about it and I'll be praying and preparing my spirit there are some things that need to shift are we together please make sure none of your loved ones misses this miracle service and for those who cannot come insist that they connect their documents whatever it is you are having trouble in your place of work it looks like doors are opening or there are patterns in your life and you are already seeing it happen again please write it down with faith in your heart your money is hanging somewhere your spiritual life is going down everything you put your hand to fails write it down let's see the god that answers by fire listen let me tell you god is determined this year more than ever before to give us visitations if our hearts are truly open to receive and for those of you who have traveled from several nations to come here please take this fire by all means back to your regions in the name of jesus christ Thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah please let's all stand for the altar call we're a soul winning ministry and we believe that every time we are gathered there will always be someone who needs Jesus desperately we're not ashamed of our love for Jesus he is the basis and the reason for all that we do we've spoken about commanding the supernatural and oh how we desire to see people encounter Jesus you are here under the sound of my voice in the main auditorium all the overflows outside and following from your homes from your offices and you're saying apostle hearing you made me know again that i need jesus with all my heart and with my everything or you are here you are saying apostle i love jesus but as it is my life has gone haywire i need to rededicate my life wherever you are we're not going to waste time tonight the holy ghost has already spoken to you i'm going to count five please run like there's fire on the mountain we're out of time i want you to come before jesus christ once i count five i'll begin the prayers all the overflows everywhere please run one let's celebrate them as they come run to Jesus let tonight be the beginning of a new season two his ways are superior some of you are coming out for the sake of your destiny in your salvation is the salvation of your family members in your salvation is the salvation of your loved ones are you coming please rush three Okay, I'm told if you can, if you're not yet out, you can come with your bags and your Bibles. But if you're out, please, those who are close to them, protect their valuables so that we don't have people picking their things. Are you still coming? Apostle, I think I'm saved, but I'm not really sure. Join them quickly. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. Young and old, everyone, please come. Hallelujah. May God bless you and I salute every one of you for making this noble decision. When it has to do with the matters of salvation, there is no shame, there is no age, there is no gender, there is no nothing. All it takes is hunger, genuine hunger for Jesus. Are we together? I salute you. It takes a lot of courage. It takes discernment to yield to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. I'm still yet to do the last count. So if you are here and you still need to join them, let's make it fast. We're out of time. Join quickly so that we pray. Jesus said, ye must be born again. The new birth is the foundation for the believer's experience. Now please raise your right hand, if you will, those in front. Please do same in all the overflows. And you who is lifting your hand in your, your home, your office, your church, wherever it is, or those who will be following by way of rebroadcast, it is an opportunity for you to make Jesus Lord of your life also say this after me let it be 
a truthful declaration from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I make Jesus Lord of my life I make Jesus Savior of my soul I make Jesus King of my life I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God I am saved washed by the blood of the Lamb I go forward ever and backward never and I enjoy the joy of salvation amen please keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones you have brought them to be part of this fold the family of faith I thank you for the power that saves the power that can save even unto the uttermost by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I declare in the name of Jesus that the Lord gives you a new beginning from tonight you begin to walk in the newness of life and you walk in righteousness even forevermore in the name of Jesus you go forward ever and backward never welcome to a new spiritual adventure in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God amen and amen thank you very much now very quickly there are counselors waving their hands they are waving the placard at you I'd like you to please move in concert they'll have a word or two with you and then you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them as they go hallelujah praise the name of the Lord thank you so much for your patience let me reiterate the announcement that um, next week is our miracle service for the month of February <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the Lord we hope that by God's grace God will do us good please do well to prepare your spirit you can fast and pray prepare your heart come with your loved ones do the work of an evangelist invite everyone around the city for all who are coming from outside this nation may I please request that as much as possible except if you're just coming on your own to be blessed you can do well to reach our PR lines so that they can help um, they can help you with all the logistics around your coming they would link you up with the protocol also praise the name of the Lord and let's do well to come on time so that we can start and trust God for a mighty manifestation of his presence and please let me encourage because of the the uh, you know the volume of people and all of that please cooperate with the ushers the protocol the security is usually really very overwhelming for them so please cooperate with them we we'll do well to make sure that everyone is comfortable and um, when they give any security instructions please it is for our own good may I request that we do well to comply instructions from parking arrangements to the logistics of our sitting and all other things please work with them so that God will help us in the name of Jesus and then if any if any international guest or any delegate is coming through you please do well to help them do not just allow them to be frustrated around the airport or just leave them to people here you know and and let me say this I know that there are people who help to facilitate things like hotel services and all of that provided you are doing what you are doing with integrity that's fine but please let us not hear that you are scamming anybody I'm not saying it just for you but maybe people around us let's put a watchful eye on people to make sure that our guests do not have a nasty experience as they prepare to come so any family that is hosting any international guests please may I request take responsibility over their welfare and their stay if you need any information you can do well to reach our public relations department and the Lord will bless you I believe that it will be a, a wonderful time the, the number is for our public relations department is on the screen please do well to have it 